Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be going through how to create a dynamic dependent dropdown list in Microsoft Excel. A dependent dropdown list in Excel is a feature where the options in one dropdown list change dynamically based on the selection of another dropdown list. It's particularly useful if your data is structured in a hierarchy format and you want to streamline the data entry process. And with all that said, let's get into the video. Before we get started though, make sure to hit the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss one in the future. In this example, we have a table here that contains three columns, a column for department, role, and job title. And the idea here is that we want to make a dropdown list for each. The dropdown list in the department column is going to contain a list of departments, with the dropdown list in the role column showing a different list depending on the selected department, and finally, the dropdown list in the job title column is going to show a different dropdown list depending on the selected role. The information that we'll be using to create our dropdown list are in this table in this tab here, in a table called Employees, and it contains all the employees at our fictional company. Really, we're interested in these columns here, and not so much the supervisor and employee names. Since we're here though, let's talk about how we expect these dropdown lists to work. If I filter the department column and select the engineering department, we see that we filter the table and show less rows, but when we look at the roles column, we only see these options available to pick from. Now, if I was to pick the eng electrical engineering role, that filters our table some more, and when we look at the job titles, we only see these three available to pick from. Now that we have an idea of how these dropdown lists are going to work, let's go back to our first worksheet and get started. Okay, so for this to work, we need to create a staging area for our data that our dropdown list will reference. So the first thing we're going to do to stage our data is to establish an anchor point for our dropdown list data. Our anchor point in this example is going to be cell E1, and I'm going to highlight the cell so it's easy for us to see. Next, we'll create our first dropdown list of departments. To create this, I'm going to use the unique function, and the array that we're going to supply the unique function is going to be all the values in the department column. Then pressing enter, we get a unique list of departments. Then from here, I'm going to go back into our function, and what I'll do is I'm going to wrap this unique function with the sort function. That way, we'll have an alphabetical order list of departments. And then finally, one more function to wrap in this sort and unique function is the two row function. And what that will do is it will turn this dynamic column array into a dynamic row array. What we've really done here is created headers for our next set of dropdown lists. And since it's a dynamic array, the size of this array will automatically expand and contract as departments get added or removed. So next, we need to populate the roles that fall under each of the headers. So to do this, I'm going to use the filter function here, and the array that I want to filter is going to be the roles column. And then in the include argument, this is where we stipulate our criteria. So we want to check if the department is equal to the value in cell E1. And then for our last argument here for if empty, I'm going to just type in the word placeholder, and we'll get to that in a bit as to why uh, that is. So pressing enter, we get our options here, but we see that there's a bunch of duplicates. So from here, we can use the unique function to get a unique list. And then we'll also wrap it in the sort function as well, so we have it in alphabetical order. So pressing enter, now we have a unique list of options under the instruction department. So from here, we can copy the filter function over, but I'm actually gonna go a bit farther because that way we can accommodate any growth in the list of departments. So I'm just gonna go maybe to column S here, and then we can see that all the options get populated depending on the department, but when there is no department, we just get the word placeholder, and that's okay because as the dynamic array grows bigger and smaller, the placeholder will go away and list new roles. All right, so here in our first column, let's go ahead and create our first dropdown list for departments. The first thing we're gonna do is select all the cells that we want to put a dropdown list in, go up to the data tab, and then click on data validation. Then from here, we're gonna select the list option. And then in the source box, 
I'm going to click this icon here and then with this I'm going to select this cell here which is our anchor point so we can see our reference point like that and then since I want to reference the dynamic array I'm going to use the hashtag symbol and then click on the icon again and then click on OK. And now we've created our first drop-down list. Now that we've created a drop-down list for departments, we can move on to the role column. And this is where things get interesting and where we need to get creative. Here's a picture of the formula that we'll be using, but let's go ahead and build this formula up from scratch. So we know that if the engineering department is selected, then the drop-down list needs to contain these values. We can actually simulate what we expect to see in the dropdown by simply referencing the dynamic array like this. So we would expect to see the dropdown list say civil engineering, electrical engineering, and mechanical engineering. Now what if we select the construction department? Well then we need to adjust the formula so it shows a different array. So instead of the one in cell F2, we need to change it to be E2. And now we see the options change. Now this leads us to the problem that we need to solve. Similar to creating the drop-down list for the department, we need to enter in a dynamic array reference in the data validation source box. But the question is, how do we return a dynamic array reference that changes based on the selected department? Now since we're dealing with cell references, we can use the address function. The address function creates a cell references text based on given row and column numbers. And if we're looking to show the values of the roles in the construction department, we need to somehow return the cell reference E2, which is the first cell below the anchor point. So in this row argument here, we can enter in the row function and reference our anchor point of E1. So I'm just gonna select the cell here and I'm gonna use an absolute reference by pressing the F4 key. So now we'll close off the row function and then I'm gonna add a one to it. So if we highlight this piece of the function, we can see that the number two is returned to us, which we're supplying the address function with the row number two. So moving on to the column argument, we can then enter in the column function, and we can again enter in our anchor point as a reference, and then we'll fix that with an absolute reference. Then we'll close that off, and then close off the address function like this, then press enter, and now we get the cell reference E2 shown to us, which is exactly what we want. The last thing that we need to add to this is the hashtag. So I'm going to do that by using the ampersand, then double quotations, then our hashtag, and close that off with another double quotation. And then when we press enter, now we get our dynamic array reference. Now finally, we need a way to return the values within this dynamic array rather than just getting a cell reference shown to us. So we can do this by wrapping the address function in a function called indirect. So wrapping it with indirect and then pressing enter, we get the roles of the construction department returned to us. Now, if we select the engineering department, what happens? Well, it looks like the formula results don't change. So we actually need to find a way to make this formula dynamic now because it's only based on the construction department's roles. So to make this formula dynamic, we'll need to use another function. So we can use the function xmatch. And we can use the xmatch function to check the position number that a given department appears in within the department dynamic array. So going back into our formula, in this column argument here, I'm going to add an xmatch lookup function. And the lookup value we want to look up is the department, the cell in the department column, and then our lookup array is going to be the list of departments, the dynamic list of departments that is. And then closing that off. And then pressing enter. What we see here is actually the roles within the project management department, which means that we're off by one column reference. So going back into our formula, I'm just going to add in minus one into the column argument, then press enter. And now we get the roles for the engineering department. But better yet, if I was to select the construction department, the roles change. And then if I pick the project management one, we see a change again, and so on and so forth. 
So now that we know what the drop-down list is going to show and the formula that we need to do so, let's cut and paste this formula and put it into the data validation source text box. So first I'm going to select all the cells we thought we want a drop-down list in, then select data validation, then select list, and we're just going to put our formula right here. Then we'll click OK. And now we get the list of roles. So that's for talent management, then engineering. We get a different list. And then for construction, we get another list. And you get the idea. Now that we've created our drop-down list for roles, we're going to do this again for job titles. And this is a good way to do a recap of what we just went through because it's going to be the same methodology. And because we're using the same methodology, that means we can use the same formulas. So just like before, we're going to establish an anchor point. So my anchor point is actually going to be somewhere in here. So let's say E10. And then instead of, of the department column, I'm going to make it the roles column. So now we get a unique list of roles. And then from here, I'm going to use the formula up here and then I'm going to paste it down here. And then instead of filtering the roles department, we're going to filter the job title department where the role is equal to the value in cell E10. So there are our job titles under the building trades role. Then we'll copy that over and let's put that in all the way to column S as well. And now we get a list of job titles per role. Then from here, we can go into one of the cells where we have that fancy formula, and then we'll copy that formula, click OK, and then we'll select all the cells in the job title column here. Then we'll click on data validation, then select list, and then paste this into the source box. And this is where we'll make some adjustments. So the first one being Instead of cell A2, we'll do B2. And then where we see E1, we're just going to change that to 10. So we'll turn that into a 10. And then turn this into a 10. So clicking OK. Now we get a list of job titles per role that changes based on the role that's selected. And as you can see, this can be scaled with more and more columns that you need to add to your data set. The methodology remains the same. All right, so the last thing to show here is remember that there are a bunch of placeholder formulas. Let's see what it looks like when we add data to our employees table. So in our employees table, I added a bunch of new departments, which means we added new roles and job titles. Let's go back and see how that changes our dynamic arrays as well as our dependent dropdown list. Now that we're back in our first worksheet, we can see that the size of the dynamic arrays have grown from adding new departments and roles and job titles. And then if we scroll over to our dropdown list, we have more departments to pick from. So let's pick architecture. And then under architecture, we have design and planning. And then under design and planning, we have some new job titles. And then picking another department, we can pick on financial operations, which gives us a new set of roles, which gives us a new set of job titles. And just like that, even though the information in our table changed, our dropdown lists have updated automatically to accommodate the new departments, roles, and job titles. And that's how you create a dynamic dependent dropdown list in Microsoft Excel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you all in the next video.